Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex and my co-host Anthony Rivardo here. Today we're going to be taking a look at some more Jason Garrett plays, you know, breaking down this offense, seeing what is wrong because clearly there's a lot <laughs> not to like with this scheme. Um, looks like Garrett really hasn't brought much over from Dallas and, and, you know, tailored it to the strengths of this team because we're seeing Evan Ingram run Jason Witten routes. We're seeing a lot of short yardage situations, you know, th just hooks and curls and nothing really pushing downfield against Baltimore. It looked a little bit better, but still was kind of lackluster. Uh, the timing was off for the receivers and the, and the quarterback Sterling Shepard ran a, a deep, a deep hook. And it was really supposed to be a deep ball up the seam. There's a lot of miscommunication and stuff like that, but we wanted to take a look at three specific plays, two of them are from the Arizona game and one of them is from the Baltimore game. Um, but for the most part, you know, you're going to see a lot of like Jason Garrett, what the hell are you doing? And, but you're going to see a lot of uh, as well, you know, there's some open reads there that DJ might, might should have hit. Um, and that's something that we're going to talk about, you know, what, what they thought this, the coverage was when, when Garrett called the play and stuff like that, obviously. But Anthony, before we dive into these clips, my friend, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm just ready to, you know, look at some more film, get frustrated about it, maybe start yelling. We'll see. Yeah, it's one way to ruin your Tuesday, isn't it? Watch Jason Absolutely. Garrett's offense. Yeah. I know I watched yeah. enough of that crap on Sundays. Tuesdays, I gotta I gotta go back to the hellhole of a uh, film the film room <laughs> and diagnose these these nonsensical <laughs> play calls. Um, especially from a couple of weeks ago, the, the Arizona game was one of the worst played called played games I've ever seen. Um, it was like legitimately a disaster. And I know the offensive line was getting beaten around, but when the pocket was available, the, the throws there was one. You're gonna see there's one clip where they the receivers run five yards all of them there's four or five receivers they all run five yards none of them run past five yards it's a, it's embarrassing oh, yeah. we'll talk about it we certainly will we will so let's get right into the first clip so right off the bats first and ten third quarter see shotgun formation bring Kane Smith in now it's kind of bunched Tight slots and That's formation tight slots. Yep. So they got tight slots here and it's, it's pretty much man coverage across the board as you're going to see right off, right off the bat. We'll cover one for you. And this throw, man, I mean, this is the first play. This is the play I was mentioning a second ago. This is at the seven yard line and nobody runs past the 12 yard line. I think Sterling Shepard's the only one that runs past the 10 actually. This is what I like this to call. It makes me want to vomit. It's malpractice. I just I hate gross. everything about this play design. It's so gross. It's like it's disgusting. You ever you ever play Madden? Right? Like and you're playing Madden, you run the tight slots formation, and there's always like the bench play call that you want to run, and then there's that other one that Coach Madden suggests to you, and you're like, please never suggest this play to me ever again. This was disgusting <laughs> and it cannot gain yardage. And this is that play. It's the exact yeah. freaking play. It's so funny. Like, it is that play, and it's called stick on Madden, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They're just going to the sticks. Yep, and It's just, so it's funny quick. to me. It's just it's just quick. Look, if you're going to do this, you might as well run the ball. The, the reality is, look, Tate, Golden Tate runs a flat route. Slayton runs a hook. Smith runs a flat route. Shep runs a hook, and Gallman comes underneath run as an option. But, like, what what exactly are you trying to do here, Jason? There are look, – look before the play here. Look before the play. They have four guys in the box, and they have two guys right outside in man coverage. Why on earth? This is a perfect opportunity to spread the offense out. Put your guys in motion, spread the offense out, and take a shot on first and ten. You know, like this is this is what you want. This is a look you want against Drake Kirkpatrick, who's had a really, really tough year. You know, do something else here. If you're going to do this, run the ball at the very least. You know, if you're going to go, you know, just bunch like this, you know, the, the, the tight ends in the, in the, the set here. I don't really get this play call, Anthony. Obviously, you know, you're like, if Matt had suggested this to me, I would probably throw, I'd probably throw my controller <laughs> at the screen. Um, I, I just, listen, who's getting open on routes like this is my question. Like, how could you possibly expect somebody to break open on this? Like, this is just so rudimentary. You know, this is such basic, hey, you run five yards and turn around, you run five yards and turn around, you run to the flat, you run to the flat. Like, there's nothing creative. There's nothing that says that Jason Garrett should be paid millions of dollars to draw plays like this in his playbook. <laughs> like, there's nothing that justifies this. This is just like, it's not I, who who could get open on this? Like, that's my question. Like, this. what what do you expect to happen on this play other than what happened on this play? Like, do you expect? Right, right, I don't right. know. 
Do you expect the defense to just not guard people? That's the only way. Well, that's that's the problem. The main problem here to me is, is that you know you have DJ who usually would run in this situation because he looks at the coverage and he's like, "What the hell is going? Why why is this even in the playbook?" So my, my big my big question here is, it's clear that it's cover one from this from this look, right? It's clear that it's cover one. Now my question is essentially, <laughs> cover one is meant to stop the run. You know, it's meant to stack the box and, and stop the run. You know. The fact that cover one is stopping our passing game is very, very problematic to me. It's very much a problem. And we saw this against Baltimore, too. They ran a lot of cover one, manned up, and they shut down our offense. The route concepts are bad. The, everything in between is bad. The timing is, ba- is bad for the quarterback and the receiver. Um, you know, players aren't running, like, sellable routes. Like, the routes – you'll see in the next video that Slayton just – I mean, he doesn't even run a route, really. It's It's – it's lazadaisical play. The guys don't look motivated. They don't look energetic. I mean, look at this. Like you, you look at Golden Tate on the right side. If he catches this ball, he's getting blown the hell up. Darius Slayton, yeah, like he's there's open. Defenders around him, but he's open at the line of scrimmage with a guy three yards behind him who's going to make the tackle, and that's your play design. Get him open behind the line of scrimmage. With like that's the play design, and it's just so poorly designed and so frustrating to um to see that the Giants are paying an offensive coordinator a lot of money to draw plays like this. Any of us could draw better plays than this. Any of us. <laughs> Listen, I'm not even saying that. I'm not even saying, you know, I could do a better job. I understand Jason Garrett's an NFL veteran. He's, you know, he gets paid to do this stuff for at least some reason. But what you just, this isn't enough. This isn't good enough. This is never good enough. And this is a play. This isn't a one-time thing. We see this play ran all the time you know like we see this often and we see it too often and it's why the giants have scored the second least amount of points in the nfl this season because of plays like this that refuse to go downfield that that just prevent your team from actually moving the ball downfield it's yeah it's disappointing well, look at darius slayton look at slayton on this play tell me what the hell darius slayton is doing on the right side here he runs this isn't even a route he runs straight up and just runs into the defender and turns around how well, do you know that, constitute that okay, as a route? I'll explain it. He knows that the ball A is not going his way because he's the third, fourth read on this play. He knows that the ball is going to the left. So B, he doesn't give a shit. He's just not running a route. He's just running up there because he knows he's not getting the ball and he knows that this play is not going to work. He knows that there is just no no hope in this play. There's nothing that can possibly come from this play that is positive. So he just runs out there and lackadaisically runs some sort of a route, but he's not really running one. Right. So he just knew he saw the coverage as soon as the ball was snapped and was like, Oh, my route's not getting open. Oh, and he probably yeah. saw it before, he the, before the ball was snapped. It was just like, my route's not getting, nobody's open. getting open. Not like That's I'm actually saying, running dude. a real route, but my route, it, whatever you want to call it is not getting open. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, here's the problem is that they're losing reps. They're losing plays before the snap even happens. You know, it, it's different if they're changing and disguising things and, and doing things uh, pre-snap to, to you know, get after the Giants. But they're literally showing the Giants they're, they're, they're in the box. They're not oh, going. Keep it, keep it paused in. there. Just look at Cam Fleming's foot, his left foot. What is happening? Oh. You see that? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man, you moved it. You could see it where it was. Oh, no, I was, I was oh, trying. I, was trying I, I wanted to see if it was like a. Yeah, where you had it paused, his foot looked just <laughs> broken. But never mind. I don't know. Like I said, this play was a disaster. I think I've seen enough times. I'm going to have to go pull the trigger and throw up in the toilet after this anyway. So, <laughs> All right. On to play two. Okay, so here, fourth quarter, second and ten for the Giants. Really, It's the beginning of the fourth quarter. They need to be driving right here, right? They need to be pushing the ball downfield. They are behind by a lot. So, you know, you'd, you'd hope they would be doing that. Now, it, it's pretty. it's pretty basic here. So, Right off the bat, this is this is a play that you're going to see the Giants lose this play again, right? Before this is pre-snap, they've already lost. They've already lost this play, and I'll tell you why. Look at Evan Ingram go in motion. That entire purpose of that, they want to see if they're if they're in man coverage. You know, they're trying to see if anyone's following him. Nobody's following him. They think it's cover two. They think those two linebackers in the middle of the field are going to drop into the middle because you'll see at the bottom of your screen you'll see a uh, uh, Shepherd, Sterling Shepherd, and you're going to see Austin Mack in the slot on the opposite side are both running slants to the middle of the field. They want to draw those defenders to the middle, and, and you're going to see Evan Ingram run into the flat. However, what they don't know is this is, a, this is a disguised cover one coverage, right? Again, teams are just playing cover one, manning up. The Giants can't stop it. This is a run-stopping. Cover one is a run-stopping formation. 
They are they are literally beating the Giants passing game in cover one. It's embarrassing. Now you're going to see Shepard run a slant. You're going to see Darius Slayton run, basically not even run a route. He just kind of runs into the, to the cornerback. And you're going to see Austin Mack run a slant across the middle. What happens is those two linebackers blitz. And, and then the safety you're going to see in the, in the back um, follow Evan Ingram. He's actually in man coverage on Evan Ingram. So they lost this play before it was even snapped. Uh, Jason Garrett's calling plays in the dark. He's like, he's basically has a coloring book and he's calling plays like a, like a fifth grader. Cause I don't even know he's, he's not diagnosing coverages. He's a 15 year veteran. He's calling plays that are not even helping his quarterback get through progressions, even see anything. This is always, this is always a play to Evan Ingram. Yeah, I mean, I might have a slightly different take here. Like the the, it's a disguised coverage, and I'm not going to place this one on Jason Garrett. Let me see the uh, the routes that are run here. Like I know Engram goes straight to the flat. There's um, three, there's I, three slants and a flat. Right, right, okay, yeah. So you see Austin Mack break wide open over the middle of the field on his slant route, and I think even Sterling Shepard gets pretty wide open on his. Uh, slant route, you know, if you watch those two guys right there, one in the slot and one on the bottom of your screen, you just watch the two of them. They both seem to get pretty open here, um, especially Austin Mack. He had, like, no one near him. And there is just one safety. It's cover one. So, yeah, let's say maybe that's not the greatest play design, but that is a play that you, you do like against man coverage, you know, like slant routes beat man coverage. You like slants against man coverage. So I don't hate this play. It's just there's the pre-snap reads and then there's the post – the pre-snap reads and then the post-snap reads. Right. Jones it got the pre-snap read right. right. He was like, oh, okay, no one goes in motion with the tight end. So it looks like this is zone coverage. They got two deep safeties. This is cover two. That's his pre-snap read. Post-snap read, he doesn't make it. He just doesn't read the field. He just catches it and throws it. Well, it's, it's con- that's – yeah, you're right. But that it's almost contradictory because think about it. Like you have – right, the, those slants across the middle are supposed to beat man coverage, right? They think it's cover two though. That's the problem. They think it's cover two. <laughs> well, okay. they think it's cover two, and they're running slants in the middle point. of beat man coverage. But that's why he threw it straight to that to that flat zone. But that's then exactly you know right. what? That's exactly but you right. know what? I want to counterpoint that because you don't want to throw to the flats <laughs> against cover two. <laughs> right, but the, but they but the thing is they were they were trying to draw with the slants to the middle that safety who's actually man coverage against Evan Ingram. They want to draw him to the middle to help those linebackers. Because if one of them no, blitzes, well, they need an extra guy. Happen. If this were a cover two, right, you have Marlon Humphrey. He's dropping, the the flats. The he's dropping the flats. He's literally going to stay exactly where he is right now. So yeah. that means that – but I get – okay, I get what they're trying to do. Okay, here, because this is the only thing that makes this make sense, right? I'll explain this. When Shepard runs this slant, it's supposed – if this is cover two – uh, Marlon Humphrey is supposed to follow him for just a little bit, clear out of that spot, and then you have the flat that's open. It's like you know putting two two uh, two receivers in one spot, and you have to make the cornerback choose, right? So if this is cover two, um, like you see, hold on, oh, now now I wish that I could actually control this because if you pause it like a second into the route, right, and then you see that um, you you have to rewind it more, like right there. Oh. oh. Ah, oh, <laughs> he almost had it. If you pause it right there. Yeah. So you see how Humphrey is, you know, following Shepard. So that means that Engram is actually open here if this is cover two. Like pretend that that safety that's crashing down on Engram just doesn't exist. Pretend he's not there. Well, that means Humphrey's back is to the sideline and Engram's about to catch this ball and turn up the sideline. And then it's just him versus that single high safety. Right. So that's what they were trying to set up here. So that makes sense. But unfortunately, like I said, the coverage pre snap and the coverage post snap were two different things. Jones totally did not recognize the post snap coverage. He didn't notice that there was a safety crashing down on Evan Engram in man coverage. So he just threw it to Engram and then didn't even go through his progressions or read any other portion of the field. So against yeah. cover two, yeah, this is the right play call. Um, but this just. It wasn't cover two. It was man coverage. So they screwed that up. You know, I have to say, I don't see Daniel Jones audibling at the line of scrimmage very often. He tried to do it last this, this last past weekend against the Ravens, and it resulted in two consecutive false starts. Um, but that's kind of my problem, is that I don't really think Jason Garrett's giving him the autonomy to make decisions at the line of scrimmage. You know, Eli Manning was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at the time in his prime because of his ability to control plays and and diagnose coverages at the line of scrimmage. That's what great quarterbacks do. 
I don't think that Daniel Jones has the freedom to do that in this scheme. I think it's a lot of very quick reads, like short, short throws, hot reads. Like it, it's very much predetermined. Um, and I don't think that these plays are, are, are really doing him any favors because as you said before, Austin Mack and Sterling Shepard are both open here. They can, yeah. especially Austin Mack. And you see Evan Ingram running on this flat route. D Dalen Jones has to see that safety crashing down and has to be able to make that decision post snap that he can look to Austin Mack. You know, there has to be a second read here. There never was a second read. That's my biggest concern. A lot of these, a lot of these plays don't have secondary reads. You know, they're all, they're all one read throws. Yeah, a lot of that's true for a lot of the plays in Garrett's playbook. It's just hot reads, you know, the first read you just throw to. And that's um my least favorite part about this entire playbook. This entire scheme is just a, it's very much predicated on hot reads and I don't like it. Yep. And uh back to the Madden suggested playbooks we go. So. <laughs> um okay. So that, that's played too. Obviously, another one that's like, you know, a head scratcher. They're not diagnosing coverages properly. You know, young quarterbacks, uh, whatever it might be, bad play calls, you know, no secondary reads. This is this is the problem that we're having here. Is that this one I put on Jones? I, 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 I know, but it's hard to tell because I don't know. Um, I don't, well, they, the thing is Jones tried to figure out if it was man or zone. It, it was just a good disguise coverage by, That's they had true. Chuck Clark. Who, actually, you know what? Chuck Clark, the strong safety was pretty much manned up against Evan Ingram the entire game. We saw him on yeah. multiple plays and he did a very good job against Evan Ingram. The thing is, you know, they tried to, they tried to figure out what was going on here and they, and they just couldn't diagnose it. And I think that, you know, Daniel Jones, it, it says a lot to me that Jason Garrett doesn't trust Daniel Jones to have second reads in this offense. A lot of times there are a lot of hot reads, a lot of first reads, quick throws. It it doesn't say a lot about Daniel Jones that you know Jason Garrett is formulating plays that get the ball out quickly and don't let him yeah. get through progressions because it to me that either says two things. One thing is that the offensive line is bad and they can't he doesn't have time in the pocket. And the second thing, he doesn't trust him to actually efficiently get through the reads. It could I think it's a combo of both personally. Yeah, I mean I I think there's through the play call and you can see a pretty clear distrust between the coordinator and the quarterback, which is, you know, very concerning for the future, but that could just be the, the offensive coordinator's fault. It doesn't have to necessarily be Daniel Jones's fault, but that's a thing. Daniel Jones played pretty well in this game. Um, I'm going to fault him. Yeah. For this play. I think that he could have done a better job post snap, but overall I think Daniel Jones played well in this game. There was just a lot of issues with the offensive coordinator, the offensive line and the playmakers and, Yada, yada. That's right. All right. Well, we'll see you on the next play. All right. So here, first and 10, first quarter against the Cardinals, back to this Arizona game um, where the play calling was abysmal. And we're going to see more of it. And I and I covered this play earlier this week. And this is one of the worst play designs I've seen. I mean, we've seen a lot of from Garrett. But this is one I, I absolutely despise. You know, because he's running double slants at the bottom of the screen with Shepard and Golden Tate. So putting in, they're putting him in motion, trying to see, you know, man coverage, what's going on here. I think they've already figured it out that it's man. Right now it's single high. So this is actually a throw to, to uh, Darius Slayton. Oh, this play call, dude. Uh, this one makes yep. me queasy. So, yeah, you're seeing double, you're seeing double slants. At the bottom of your screen, you're seeing a hook by Evan Ingram. Usually he's throwing that hook to Evan Ingram because for whatever reason, obsessed with running Evan Ingram six yards and turning around, which, you know, that's a Jason Witten play call. That's what Anthony said in the last video. Essentially, you know, if if you if you wanted to throw to Jason Witten, you would have just signed him this offseason in his like two non-existent legs. Basically, put him with a wheelchair out there at this point. He's so slow. The reality is, is like Evan Ingram's not J Jason Witten. Evan Ingram is an extremely explosive athlete who can run extremely fast. Drag him across the formation, design rollouts, design play action, do these things and get your guys open. We see it with George Kittle and you know the 49ers all the time. And, you know, they're just not doing these guys any favors. And instead, you know, they're better off throwing it to the bottom of the screen because instead he throws it to Darius Slayton, who has two defensive backs on him. What's the point? What's the point here? I don't know. Like, again, it's like the first play that we looked at. Who do you expect to get open here? Like, who do you actually expect to, you know, create separation and break free on a play like this? I, I have no idea what the intended idea of this play is like to just run five yards and turn around is not going to work to run 
you know, a slant on with coverage where they're playing five yards off and waiting for you to slant to a specific spot. I don't see how anybody could actually succeed when an offense is calling plays like this. That's my problem, right? Like Jones had no choice but to throw that ball straight to the dirt. And I bet that that actually is an accurate throw because I bet he was trying to throw it into the dirt just because he knew it would have been a turnover. You know, because it would have been a turnover if he threw an accurate pass because the guy is blanketed. Every single guy is blanketed. You know, it's just – this is it's very much like the first play that we looked at. It's just, you know, it's simply Jason Garrett just running people into coverage. I, I don't know. It's just so poor, it poorly designed. It's very it's just rudimentary. If you were gonna make if you wanted to actually complete this pass, you would he would have just swung it out to the flats to Gallman. You know, this was never a pass that was gonna be completed ever. And you know yeah. the Arizona is basically just playing cover one again, like most teams do against the Giants because it works against the pass and the run. Basically, you know, they're just keeping all the receivers in front of them. This is never going to be a completed pass no matter where he goes. Maybe he goes to Evan Ingram, but, you know, he probably fumbles it or that ball goes flying up into the air for an interception. Um, I, I just don't really get, at the very least, at the very least, you have that single high safety back about 15, 20 yards, right? And at the very least, they could do this. Take Sterling Shepard and run him behind that man coverage. Run him into that zone right between the 40 and 30 yard line right over here. Just try and get something downfield. Push push it. You know, Take a shot downfield. Get it over man coverage. It's not zone, clearly. Right off the bat, we know this because they move, they move Wayne Gallman back from, uh, from out wide. And, and uh, you know, the corner follows him. Right? Yeah, this, I mean, this- that's... That's my problem with plays like like this where, you know, yeah, like an offensive coordinator, you know, we, we looked at um, Kevin Stefanski, right? He'll send someone deep to open something up underneath. But with Jason Garrett, he just has everybody go underneath. And it's like, who are you fooling? <laughs> what are you expecting to break open? Are you expecting the defense just to not cover people? Like, I don't understand what the intention is is on this play like look at how guarded everybody is and nobody ran a route that could actually get past the coverage like this like no one ran anything you know i could go out there and run the route that golden tate just ran and it would have the exact same you know uh, success rate like there is no success rate not just because i'm me and i'm not golden tate an nfl athlete but just because this route against this coverage has zero chance of breaking open on a crucial third down opportunity. Like same goes for every single one of these routes. You can put me, you can put Alex, you can put Chris, the entertainer, and you can put Mike too nice. And that's the receiving core. And it'll, and Paul Blart can be the running back. Exact same thing on this play. You, you might even somehow luck into better chance of success somehow. I don't know. I, it's just, <laughs> No matter who you put out there, you could put Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson, and Terrell Owens out there. You're going to get the same result on this play design. That's the, right. that's my whole idea. At the very least, I would have liked them maybe to do something like this. You know, run run a seam route with Evan Ingram here and then run uh, Darius Slade on the opposite side of the field on, on, a, on a go route. You know, if, at least you force that cover one, that guy, that, that, that safety to commit to one side, and then you take a shot to the other side. You know, like for, force him to commit somewhere or, you know, at least just do two go routes on the outside. That would even work too. I know Patrick Peterson's out there, but at least take a shot at least take a shot if you're going to do some crap like this. You know, we have, we have, how many times do we pause a video and there are parallel, there are guys lined up at at, at one hash, you know, there's, there's four guys lined up at one hash. That is like, you know, just like losing inside, getting beat inside for an offensive tackle is like a cardinal sin. Having four guys lined up within the same two yards on, on, on the hash it should be a cardinal sin for, for offensive coordinators, you know? And the, and the, the worst part about it is I'm not sure that, you know, the Maras or whoever's making these decisions in the front office are looking at this and saying, this is a problem. I don't even know if they're looking at this and, and realizing how bad this is. You know what I mean? If they aren't, it's, it's primarily because they have to, they have to see it, dude has to be a friend of theirs. It has to be some sort of nepotism or some sort of, you know, I'm just going to hire you because you're a friend of ours. But I can see why Dallas fans congratulated us for losing this season because we have Garrett. Like, I remember when we got him, they were like, good luck. 
and I'm seeing it right now. He lost play calling duties years ago, and it's because of crap like this. I can't wait for them to fire this guy. I, I hope he, I hope he's gone before the freaking game on Sunday against Dallas. Otherwise, we're gonna get smoked. I can't watch this. You anymore. never know, man. Listen, if he opens up the playbook on Sunday and we beat Dallas and we're aggressive and we throw down field and people are just running playbook. wide open, then I'll be like, okay, cool. But still, opens everything on this season, you should still be fired that, for it. I don't even think there is a there is an opening up. I think it's I think it's a, a diner menu. You I know? think he's and opened up the playbook and we just are waiting for him to open up the playbook. And he's like, this he's is already it. done there's, it. There's no more. Yeah. You, you've already hit look, the back look. page. <laughs> he he's reading a diner menu. It's between waffles and waffles with syrup. That is the as most as creative as it gets on his menu. There's two freaking options, okay? You uh, there's can't no even get the no bacon bread. stuffed waffle at this. Restaurant. There's no grits. That's there's amazing. no bagels. There's no orange juice. There's nothing, man. <laughs> there's nothing to choose from here. Look, look. You get milk. There's no chocolate milk. milk. It's not even low fat milk. It's the crappy two percent. Look, if we're they're running slants here, man. The slants are basically like the waffles. You know, and the hooks are the waffles with syrup. Done with it. Throw it out. They're not even using eggs in the waffles. They're basically crap. They're, they're it's, it's disgusting. I don't want. I don't want to go to this diner anymore. I want to go to a new diner, one that is creative and has the metallic stuff on the outside, like the 1970s and 80s. And I want the cool diner. I don't want the diner that's running out of business. This is disgusting. I, I agree. I agree. I hope I you like my agree. diner. That's all I got. Right? I, I loved it. Yeah, I didn't. Else. I think the two of us made a lot of great analogies in this video, to be completely honest. We've taken the analogy game to another level. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if this if this ref right here is saying, DJ, I hope you're not throwing slants right now. Backs up. Yeah, he's throwing slants. <laughs> he's we throwing all knew it was coming. That that's the like, oh, like, bad part, dude. He's like, <laughs> when I'm watching these games, I know it's coming. At the very least, these these refs probably know they don't have to go very far. They're not gonna have to run downfield after a Kyrie <laughs> catch. They're like, all right, well, like worst case, I can walk to the next first down marker. Like, the, not even getting my 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 exercise in for the day. These guys don't even break a sweat. They're, after the game, they're like, I gotta go hit the treadmills or something. Yeah, you know, it's 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 bad. Look, we get this is really bad. I mean, what the hell is this, man? The time by the time he throws this. He's on the ground, man. Darius Slayton's on the ground. He's on the ground. This is a good pocket. It's a good pocket. He could he could stand there for pocket. a second while, while a route develops. You know, there's, no the route's developing. There. there's nothing developing. They're all just, you know, five steps or less, you know, quick routes. There's nothing developing yeah. is the problem. Like, you're right. Yeah, good protection. Got plenty of time to wait for the play to develop. But the play is developed within two seconds, and it's just developed into a steaming pile of horse manure. That's, that's I'd censor uh, myself. Generous. That's generous. <laughs> that's generous. Generous manure for the for this. But uh, well, I hope you guys learned a thing or two about how how frustrated we are. If you hadn't figured that out already, Jason Garrett has got to go. I'm tired of it. You know, after looking into the film, we, we're going to keep doing these breakdowns to really prove it to you. If you haven't been sold already, I see some people. He needs another year. You know, Daniel Jones. Um, that's the big argument right now. Daniel Jones shouldn't be going into his third year with an offensive coordinator. I don't care. There is no way they could bring in a new offensive coordinator and the offense look worse than this. They average under right. 17 points per game. 17 points per game. Darius Slayton had 740 yards and eight scores last year, and now he has three scores, and two of them came in week one. Okay? Listen, and he I, I hate that argument. I hate it. It's, it's, I, I hate that argument. I'm – I'm, ha I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I'm happy you brought that up. I hate that argument because you know what? If you think that having an offensive coordinator, a better offensive coordinator out there will make your quarterback worse, then you need a new quarterback. So if you believe in Daniel Jones, then you should absolutely want to see them get a better offensive coordinator to help him take his game to the next level. It has nothing to do with about with being comfortable in a scheme for year to year. It's about being in a good scheme that puts you in position to succeed. He's not in position to succeed because of the scheme right now. The Giants interviewed Brian Dabble from the Buffalo Bills to be their offensive coordinator, or they wanted to, they requested to, and the Buffalo Bills said no. <laughs> and now look at Josh Allen. Imagine, dude, imagine if we actually got Brian Dabble. Imagine what this offense would look like with Daniel Jones. Daniel, yeah, I'm not going to discount Josh Allen's success and say that he wouldn't be the MVP candidate, but Daniel Jones potentially – could be working his way to being one of those big star players because that offense is amazing and the scheme that they put together there is great and it's very quarterback friendly and it's very wide receiver friendly it's just very successful 
this and isn't exactly so just imagine if somebody new stepped into this you know this team with a better playbook and could just get the most out of daniel jones and then if he can't then you move on or if he shows some flashes and you want to string him along another year you can even do that it's just that argument of not wanting to stunt his growth it's just it's backwards thinking like you aren't going to stunt his growth if anything by getting a new coordinator you're going to accelerate it right yep that that's that's right man i mean there's nothing worse than this right now, okay? There is no way you can get a new coordinator and have an offense be worse. That's how I personally unless, feel. Unless right? you hire Adam Gase after he gets fired. That was that's yes, it. Yes, that is that <laughs> even even then I don't think we'd be this bad because at least they have some guy running downfield every now and then. But here's the reality. Look, DJ's DJ's trying to evaluate a coverage before this play, and they already lost this rep because they're running double slants hooks across the board. There's no point in even evaluating and trying to diagnose a coverage when they're clearly playing man and your guys aren't running more than five yards downfield. DJ, stop trying. Stop pointing out the mic. Stop trying to actually diagnose this coverage because you already lost this rep because your coordinator is a pile of junk. Word. That's where we are. Word. Yeah. Listen, yep. I'm just ready to move on from the uh, Garrett experiment. It didn't work out. That's okay. You know, they took a chance on a uh, retread, former head coach with a lot of experience, helped. Uh, Joe Judge get acclimated to the head coaching duties that he was required to fulfill. Okay, it didn't work out. He, his offensive scheme was garbage. Move on, find someone new, and find someone better who will actually take this offense to the next level. That's That should be the mentality. Yep. And, you know, as always, guys, really appreciate the support. If, you, if you're you know listening at this point in the video, you've heard our disdain and our, and our remorse over the hiring of Jason Garrett and why we think he should be gone ASAP Rocky. But, you know, this is something we're going to deal with for, for next week. And hopefully to the football gods, they bless us with a new offensive coordinator who we don't want to let go like the bills. Um, but as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning into fireside giants and these breakdowns. We're working really hard to get this content out for you guys and, and show as much as we can. Um, but as always have a nice day and we'll catch you on the next one.